said that you've healed, what have you done differently in your training just to make sure that some of those recurrent injuries aren't going to happen anymore going forward? I mean, stretching, hyperbaric, a little bit of yoga, a little bit of everything. I mean, I've been keeping myself in good shape, swimming, you know, just everything. One thing in particular about some of those injuries that happened before, I remember when you had the Pacquiao fight, there was a moment in the later rounds where you were considering possibly pulling out of the fight, and Azim was able to talk you out of it. Is that the only moment where you ever felt like, man, I just can't go on anymore? Because normally, you know, you've had injuries, that's never first in mind. Is that the one time there was ever doubt in your mind in the ring? I mean, if I can't fight, I will. So, I mean, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that I can beat these guys. You know what I'm saying? Now that I'm healed and I have all this, uh, the real I'm working, I'm just falling for top people, you know, I'm good. When I was hurt, you know, you can't do anything about it, you know. My back was giving out on me, I mean, just to this up. I'm mad about my knee. I know you've been talking a lot about Al Heyman because, of course, like you mentioned, you had the day first. You feel he's been trying to sabotage you with his Mara and Santa Cruz fight that's coming up on the same night. Yeah, let me ask you this. Because I, I, I had that day waiting for him, and then he found out, and then he went and I put the fix to the I had to fix him on the hold. What? Sorry. I had it on the hold. And then he went up on me and then tried to, you know, Look at Santa Cruz or and uh, Abner Myers or whatever, but I'm like, whatever, I'm still going to make this happen. I mean, there's all kinds of work like going on. I'm mad at it because the commission try to get things done for that. I mean, everybody was just hating. And this bitch, I mean, it was fighting to promote themselves. And when they start doing that, you could do a monopoly on the phone game. I mean, you know, I hear about uh, promoting the you know, having the same problem, too, as well. Other big promoters. Problem ways, uh, where he's making uh, fights on the same day as as, as, a, as, a, as a other uh, promotion. Now, what Don wants to what Al Heyman has been doing is we've seen it with his, some of these other promoters. He's been kind of buying them out. They're using them as a front for some of his cards. Would you still be willing to work with him to fight what he's done? You know what you said with the Senate's first fight. Would you be still willing to come to the table with them and do a partnership like that, being that you have a promotion company that you're trying to get off the ground as well? I will fight with anybody. It doesn't matter who it is. You know what I'm saying? Any promotion, as long as it's the best fight. That's what they don't want to see. Are you on the call now? I am. After some uh, technical difficulties, I was able to call in and it's a matter. Please forgive me. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Shane, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for uh, having me. After, I was just now jumping on a little late to the party because I didn't hear the beginning of the show. I know that Ismael has asked you about the current Don King situation and what's going on with your fight. You just discussed that this is a deliberate attempt from other promoters to take away attention from your fight that you let book long in advance. Talk to the people who are just new. They know the fight is happening, but they don't know how the matchmaking and then just the agreement to fight each other and this grudge match came to fruition. Talk a little bit. Talk a little bit of how you all just decided to do this right now. Well, you know, the fighters that have promotional companies don't really promote themselves. It's like a front. You know, they, they don't really promote the actual fight. And then I got my promoters like it. I was able to, to promote, and I'm trying to actually use it. Not just, you know, pretend like I'm using it or whatever. Like, we'll go by promotions, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's a real promotion, so I'm trying to make sure that I use, uh, make sure that I'm actually doing the promotion. I have a team with me that's uh, helping and that's doing with me, and I'm making the money myself. Not, not, not third party, not that uh, different people. Uh, it, it, it's me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the money. I'm gonna make sure that it's me. So you know, we've long been familiar with Shane Mosley, the nice guy. But within the last six to nine months, you've kind of taken on this almost like a Batman, Arkham, darker Shane Mosley. When did this Shane Mosley 
come alive and, and what, what brought about the change? Because you're pretty, pretty snappy and pretty quick to check people on social media these days. What, what, what brought this new shame mostly about? You know, I'm, I'm tired. I mean, I'm tired of this, 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 this mess. I mean, you know, they, they, they keep trying to say that, you know, they're, they're not, uh, that I'm not, you know, I am who I am, whatever. I mean, you know, it's, it's crazy. And ideally, once the match is complete, and I think the general consensus among anyone who knows anything about boxing is you'll be victorious in the fight, possibly by knockout. Where, how do you map things out from here? Where do you go from here? I want to look to find me next. I mean, that's what I want. That's what I go from here. I'm not just willing to fight. That's what I want. That's what I want to fight. Realistically, you know, how active do you see yourself being? We see, you know, a lot of fighters, what, Antonio Tarver, Roy Jones Jr., Shannon Bray, a lot of these guys have been really, really active. Do you foresee yourself being that active, or how often would you like to fight per year? I give this people what a fight, they that's good. You know, realistically, I give this two or three, you know, fights a year. But no problem. Do you think that this version of Shane Mosley, the the one who's quick to check people, would have made you more mer- money earlier in your career if you let fans see this side of yourself? Or did you feel like you had to be Mr. Nice Guy to further your career along? I mean, this president of Shane don't take any shit. Probably made more, way more money than been like this a long time ago. This, this is where I am anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. With this, with this fight, what message are you looking to send to the boxing industry? Yeah, I mean, if the fight's not stupid, we do it ourselves. You know, make these fights and, and make things happen. We have to put with the bullshit. What do you, you could say? But, good. No, knowing your, since you've had such a long career and you know the sport intricately, if you could change one single thing about boxing right now, what would it be? I would definitely change the politics. Too much politics in the, in the, in the boxing, boxing game. People are, people aren't fighting to get it best, you know, they're fighting... Uh, as far as the money or whatever, uh, they're not fighting the best. They're fighting with their hearts. Mm-hmm. Excellent. I'm gonna bring in Ryan Dizen. He has a few questions for you. Go ahead, Ryan. Hi, Shane. Um, you know, your last fight was in the end of 2013. Uh, you got stopped for the first time in your career because of, of your back. Do you feel like your back is 100 percent now? I mean, I flew back and forth, you know, to Australia in one week, like 16 hours there, six hours back, six hours there. I mean, it was just crazy. And, you know, riding on the plane like that, I mean, his back wouldn't get tight. I mean, you get to do certain things. I mean, your hamstrings are, are tight and you just sit in the snare thing, uh, going back and forth. So, I mean, what happened happened, but, I mean, you know, I don't know, it just did happen. Um, why was Ricardo Mayorga the opponent that was chosen out of, you know, everybody else? He's the only one that manned the fuck up. <laughs> He's the only one that wanted to fight. He said, let's fight. Okay, let's go. Let's put it. Everybody else was saying, and that's okay. And they said, oh, oh, oh. let's just put promoter and talk to this or that one, whatever. So, and it happened. It never happened. Well, I noticed a little pattern with your career. Um, you lost fights to Vernon Forrest. Um, you know, uh, my order beat Vernon Forrest, and now you're, you're trying to beat Marga twice. And I th- did the same thing with, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Fernando Vargas. You know, you I mean, twice, what? Yeah, you lost twice to Winky Wright, and then you beat Fernando Vargas twice. And, you know, Vargas beat Wright. I love him, man. I want to know for myself. You know, I just want to get your breaks off from the 
I mean, I've I beat him a nice about one second ago. Now, you know, he's won a rematch. I'm all for giving rematches. Um, so, this is going to take time knocking him out.
And everybody knows that it's at least a year for your, your injury to heal for that. It felt pop Achilles, so. But. Oh, I thought your uh, your foot was the main problem in the pack outside because your your shoes. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't the foot. It was the, it was my right foot that showed the blisters just because it was overcompensating for the Achilles that was popped before the fight. I actually popped the Achilles right, right after I signed the contract. I popped the Achilles and then had to train as far in the boot. And then when I fought back out four months later, made whatever I had to fight. Then it showed that I had. This is left this is on my foot, on the right foot. And that's when I was talking to uh, Nazim. I was like, Nazim, you know, I got pop and I have blood blisters on my right foot. I have no legs at all. And that's when Nazim was like, come on, man, you got it. You got it. You can go. Well, I know, that you, I know you're injured, but just, just face the fight. Okay. Well, I mean, it seems like man, a lot of your recent fights, and you know, there's some kind of injury that's, that's been bugging you. Um, when was the last time you put 100 percent in a fight? That's true. I've been fighting for 30 years with no break. But when I fought Marvin Rito in 2009, there was no injury. Everybody was calm down thin. It was okay. like tackle at night and a knockout, right? Right. But after 2009, you know, 2010, injury, 11, you know, what I'm saying there's, there's injuries. And then now I'm healed from coming back. So I want to rematch this guy because now that I'm, I'm not injured anymore, it's going to be the fight that everybody wants to see. You know, they're going to see the shit. I mean, but our opposite is fighting. Now he's 50 years old and he's beating these guys at like everywhere. You know, I'm sitting there while I'm uh, wide my web on Kev, knocking out Pacquiao when he's not injured. You know what I'm saying? And in, in five rounds or whatever. And he's not injured. He's 41 years old right now. So, you have all these guys, you know, coming back at 40, doing you know, knockout stuff because they're not injured anymore. Okay. All right. Uh, Ismail, do you have any, uh, any closing thoughts or questions for uh, Shane before uh, we let him get back into the peace mode and preparation mode? That's right. Shane, being that you're a student of history, I always wanted to ask you, if, what would be your dream fight throughout history? If you could afford anyone in history from your lightweight days up until your, even your junior middleweight days, who would you want to have faced? I think the dream fight would have probably been with Bill Duran, because um, we both were on top of the game at lightweight. I mean, what's the way? I mean, I like love shooting with Leonard. That has been a, definitely a, a great fight. But uh, I think with Bill Duran at lightweight, would have been a matchup of uh, the, the century. <laughs> and how do you see that fight going? Definitely, I always see myself winning. I mean, there's always a way of winning. I think that was a big lightweight um, and carried a uh, great bunch of power in lightweight. And you know, Berger Rand probably wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have been able to, to handle that, that type of punch power or strength, physical strength I have. But it was a really good fight because he does a lot of great things. I mean, I just watched five of the tapes and films and, you know, we got the same type of heart and, and demeanor that that, uh, that type of heart when you fight to the end, to almost to the death. You know, you just you just go out and you get everything, you have 100, 200, 300 percent, you know, whatever you got, you can leave it on the way. You know, um... You know, considering you and Roberto Duran were both, you know, great lightweights, but, you know, Duran, you know, he, he fought a lot of other great lightweights, too. While, you know, you, you, you were world champion, but you, you seemed to, you know, get out of the weight class pretty fast, you know, got that big money fight with Oscar De La Hoya. Um, actually, it, actually, I think you guys were the weight class that fast. I was eight. I had all eight of my fights were by knockout. All eight of my discounted defenses were by knockout. Yeah. So, I, 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 had, I had eight. Eight knockouts, and that, that wasn't quick. It was, it was kind of long. It was actually too long for me to sit there in the first place because, you know, I was having a lot of problems looking that way. The last, the last time I fought, I didn't eat for two days, and was in the steam room or whatever, trying to make weight and barely make weight. When I, when I finally drank something, I broke out in a cold sweat. That's how much, that's how hungry I was. I didn't have so I couldn't do that. I couldn't. I couldn't just do that anymore. Well, I was just wondering, you know, um, 
were there other top lightweights at the time that you wanted to fight that you didn't get opportunities to do so? I mean, it was like Cesar Bazan. He was one of the ones. Um, C.P. Johnson, I fought him with the amateurs uh, a couple of times. He was a good, another great lightweight. thought that was pretty good. And uh, that, that was pretty much it around, around that time. At that time, that was it. It wasn't, you know, Mayweather was 130, and he didn't want to come up. I actually did an interview with him, I think, in Michigan when he was fighting somebody in Michigan. And I asked him, was he going to come up to 135? In Typhoon, because, you know, I knew I couldn't make it anymore. Uh, the two, two fights, two fights in before I, before I actually was 147 fight after. Um, and he said, no, he wanted to be called my zone's record at, uh, 130 or whatever. And I was like, oh, okay. I, I, you know, I'm just making sure, you know, before I moved to 47 and go beat after, I wanted to view some of this. And he was like, no. So everybody in the room, I think it was ESPN, everybody in the room heard that. I actually talked to him personally and pointed him out. So he knew that I, that I meant this that I went. So the other was other than that, it was Tricky Johnson and Sidney Bazan, uh, and I was, those, those are the two guys at the top. I think it was Tech Maswell, that was um, a Russian guy. He was on the team as well. Yeah, did you all ever get a, you know, in the room with uh, Paul Spadafora? No, I never. Paul Spadafora was even, I didn't think he was uh, around the same time I was. I'm a little older than him, so it wasn't, he wasn't around the neighborhood at that time. I think he was coming up, uh, trying to set the ranks then. So he wasn't, he wasn't even mentioned in the, he wasn't even in the top whatever back then. But yeah, just know, I think when you vacated the title, he was the one that picked it up, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. Um, I just knew that I fought uh, John Brown. And when I fought him, I remember weighing in. They barely, barely make the bet at 135. And then uh, the night of the fight, I went into the ring at 151. Um, and I was like, man, this is, I'll never run to that weight again. Uh, 135. I mean, I actually left, I actually left the, uh, Olympics at 19, uh, 1992 at 139. I fought while fighting amateur. So, I knew that that's what it was doing, man. And Paul, I mean, he was just excited about it. He wasn't around me at the time. Not that I know of. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people, you know, seem to think that, uh, Mayweather was the one that asked you for the fight. And, and uh, that, yeah, I know because Mayweather, I think, put that out there. But if you, I was commentating, I think it was in Grand Rapids when he was fighting uh, maybe Carlos, Carlos, uh, Carlos somebody. But it was in Grand Rapids. And he was doing a hometown fight. And I was the commentator. And I asked him, was he coming 35? And he said, no. He has no work. No, um, no problems. They just doesn't want to come to 135. Has no idea he wants to be called my, my zone record. He makes 130 uh, uh, great. You know, it was the argument 130, and he's the 135, and that was it. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. And well, then, I think the opponent was uh, Carlos Hernandez. Carlos Hernandez, right. yeah. Right. Yeah, Carlos, Carlos Hernandez and Grand Rapids. And that's when I was, and I was the commentator. And everybody in that room heard that. So. Okay. Solid. All right. Uh, before we conclude with Shane, anything uh, for the good of order? Right, let me just say, Shane, thank you so much for taking time away from training and your schedule and all your other obligations to speak with us. We really, really appreciate it. And, you know, fans, if you are in the L.A. area, go over to the forum right over here in Inglewood. Beautiful, brand-new facility, remodeled. Spend some time in Inglewood. Go check out uh, Shane and uh, Ricardo Mayorga on August 29th. Uh, what time are the doors open for those who want to uh, take in the fight? The doors are uh, open like at 5.30. Uh, they've come down and they sit in the car. And then my fight uh, may be closed on about 8 o'clock. I know the first fight will be on TV at 7. 